A stately man, he did not shout passionately at the young girl. He was sure that she poisoned his own daughter. The man was furious that he had sheltered and given her the opportunity to learn from the best mentors, and she had paid him so cruelly. The girl said that she did not harm Vivian. Listening to his words, the young lady remembered how she was taken from the orphanage to an aristocratic family. She knew it wasn't done with good intentions. The daughter of the head of the family was seriously ill, and the orphan was taken as her replacement since Vivian was supposed to marry the prince. The girl wanted to have a real family, but unfortunately for her, she was just a replacement. My whole life was fake. Nobody needed him. It really upset her. The enraged man hit the girl and she fell to the floor. He was told that the poison was found in the tea leaves that the girl brought to Vivian. He shouted at her that she would never become a queen because she was a commoner. The young lady denied everything. She said that her engagement had long been broken off and there was no reason for her to harm her sister. But the adoptive father did not believe her. He was sure that she was jealous of his own daughter since she became the bride of Prince Ares and therefore she poisoned her. He knew that she did it because she wanted to get rid of competition. In despair, the girl said that if she wanted to harm Vivian, she would not have done such an obvious trick. The man was outraged by what he heard. In a rage, he put a sword to his adopted daughter's face. In agony, he screamed furiously and asked how she could do this to the prince's bride. Their family fight was interrupted by a young man who announced that Prince Ares had arrived. He told his father that he would deal with the girl himself. Their father is gone, leaving the young people alone. Wood was glad when he saw the girl in such a deplorable state. She said that she knew everything. It was the young man who set her up. The girl also asked him if he knew that if his sister drank tea, she would certainly die after being cured of a terrible illness. The young man just grinned. He knew she wouldn't prove anything. He hated her from the moment she arrived in their house, and he would be glad if she were gone. He also told the young lady that he did not act alone. The empress ordered him to organize everything. The young heir was sure that the girl had seduced the prince and thereby displeased the empress. He threw her a bottle of poison. The girl took it and calmly drank it. Dying, she told her adoptive brother that she was already living her seventh life and just wanted to have a real family, but she doesn't intend to play games anymore. The young lady looked at her wrist. There was the last life there. She had to live it differently from others. Nivea endured all the torment for a long time now she needs to live for herself. The girl woke up in the room on a bright day. She was always reborn in her eight-year-old body, and I always wondered how long she would live this time. How much will she be tortured this time? Nivy knew for sure that this life would be completely different. The girl saw that the number on her wrist had disappeared. She realized that this was her last life. The girls just wanted to find a family and be loved and did not understand the reason for her rebirth. The young girl just wanted to be taken away from such a family. The young girl was crying when she heard a noise from behind the door and realized that Wood had locked it. She recalled how, in her fourth life while rushing to class, she fell from the balcony. But there were cases when she survived the fall. The field of such Wood always mocked her. Wood always bullied his adopted sister. From the very beginning, he disliked her, but over time, he simply hated her. The girl approached the door. It was forbidden. She found a hole in the door that Wood made to let bees in through. The girl decided to use the hole. She used the chair to get the oil. She poured it through the hole and set the door on fire. She didn't have enough fire, so she took the books and threw them into the fire. Nivea told herself that the last obedient girl had already died and only she could protect herself. Agnes went out onto the balcony and began to frantically scream and ask for help. She wanted everyone to see the fire and her defenseless in the clutches of death. The servants came running to the screams. They saw fire and a little defenseless girl who asked for help. The girl was not in very good condition. They tried to put out the fire, but unfortunately their strength was not enough. Seeing the fire, Wood shouted for them to put out the fire quickly. Since his playroom was nearby, he didn't care about anything else. He didn't love his half-sister so much so that her life didn't bother him much. The lord of the house came to the noise and with the help of his magic managed to put out the fire. The master looked at Nivea and thought that he could not lose a gem like her. He ordered that a doctor be brought to her. 
The nanny was shocked by what happened. She asked Wood how he was feeling and if everything was okay with him. The Lord stood and watched what was happening. He thought Wood might be involved. He also did not rule out the possibility that someone from other families could have started the fire because he adopted the girl. But when he heard that there was a hole in the door and someone had poured oil into it, he realized that this was very petty. The man shouted to the nanny and asked if she knew anything about what was happening. Philippa hesitated, not knowing what to answer. She knew that Wood had made the hole in the door. Wood ahead of her shouted that it was he who made the hole. He said that he didn't see anything wrong with it because he was just playing around. Nivia walked over quietly and timidly said that she asked him to open the door. Everyone began to whisper. They realized that Wood was the instigator of the fire. Wood was at a loss as to what he was accused of. The gentleman stood and thought about the situation. He knew that everyone wanted to destroy Agnes's family. After all, they were the owners of the largest and highest quality mine for the extraction of magic stone, and everyone would be happy about their decline, especially the family of Empress Lucia's mother. Their main income was magic trains which consumed magic stones as fuel. In exchange for a cheap supply of stones, the Duke was going to make a deal that would make his daughter Empress. But many eyes were focused on Nivea. The Duke knew that if the fact that the girl was of plebeian origin came to light, there would be big problems, but everyone who knew was forced to remain silent. The Duke realized that his son had something to do with the fire. He shouted at him furiously, but he only said that he locked the girl and had nothing to do with the fire. Wood asked Nivea who set her on fire. Wood was surprised that the girl was just standing and looking at him and not trembling as always. In a fit of anger, he hit her. Nivia fell. She knew that no matter what she said now, they would all believe her. Falling to her knees, the girl began to apologize to her brother and say that he did nothing. Wood was pleased. The gentleman looked at everything that was happening and ordered that a doctor be brought to Nivia, and he punished Wood, saying that he was on probation. The nanny told the master that he punished his son too harshly, but the man was furious with what was happening and said that if she had watched the children better, nothing would have happened. He also ordered Nivia to be moved to the third floor. Wood was shocked, but his father said if he behaved differently, his punishment would be harsher. Vinnie knew who was involved in the fire, but she knew that she had to remain silent and even knowing the truth, not tell anyone anything, because the truth will make her feel very bad. Walking into the room, Nivia thought about why she wanted so much to look like her family. She had red eyes and blonde hair. Such features really made her stand out. This didn't suit her before. The girl knew that she had to be strong no matter what. Nivia knew that all eight lives had a similar sequence of events. Within a year of Vivian's recovery, she would certainly die. Magical reflux disease is incurable. However, after 12 years when Nivian becomes an adult, a cure will be found. The girl knew that for 20 years she would live with a family and look for a way to please them. Nivia knew that she had to leave the family the sooner the better Prince Ares was involved in her departure. He didn't care about her status. He just frantically wanted to take possession of the girl. Nivia knew that if she wanted to leave her family, she needed to do two things. Cure your sister and find a guardian among the aristocrats. The girl already knew what medicine could help her sister. She also had options for custody. Duke of Lark Esselred was single in his thirties and had no heir, but the second Prince Creed would become his adopted son after the death of Empress Estelle. Based on her knowledge from past lives, the girl knew that there was still time before the prince appeared. The place will be empty for a whole year and she can do whatever she sets her mind to. She furiously wanted to leave her family and get rid of this attitude. Nivia sat and quietly thought about everything. The maid interrupted her thoughts. Charlotte brought her something to eat. Almost knocking Charlotte off her feet, the nanny entered the room. She was very angry and wanted the girl to go to the Duke and beg for forgiveness on her knees. The nanny was very angry and wanted the girl to apologize as she had caused inconvenience to the young master. He was grounded for the whole day. She thought this was too harsh a punishment for Wood. Nivia, by the hand. The young lady said that she knew what she could talk about about how the nanny was embezzling money passing it off as alimony. The nanny was shocked by what she heard, but the girls knew that every time the duke found out about something like this, he killed the nanny. 
the woman was too inattentive to get away with it. In response to the accusations, the nanny only shouted that she was too devoted to the family to do such a thing. Mentally, the nanny wondered how the young girl could know about her machinations. The nanny screamed that Nivian had no evidence of her crime, to which the girl calmly replied that she could go to the Duke and tell everything, and he would decide whether it was true or not. The nanny was very angry at the girl's behavior. In a fit of anger, she pushed her, and she fell to her knees. The doctor saw what was happening. Charlotte quickly ran to Nivia and asked how she was feeling. Nivia only said that she knew that the nanny was unhappy with her, since she now lived on the third floor. But she was at a loss how the nanny could do this to her. She was simply carrying out the will of the duke. Hearing such a statement, the nanny was seriously surprised. The doctor, seeing their fight, asked Philippa how she could contradict the order. The nanny said that the girl was lying, and the fact that she pushed her was an accident. Philippa stood and thought for a long time about what she should do in such a situation. Nivia interrupted her thoughts by saying that she would remain silent and not tell the Duke anything the nanny left in a hurry. The doctor began examining Nivia. Charlotte said she would take the girl to bed. Nivia remembered that the maid followed in the footsteps of the nanny, remembering she thought that such an ally would not hurt her. After examining the girl, the doctor said that she had no serious injuries. After the examination, Nivia asked the doctor not to talk about what happened to the nanny as she did not want to be punished. The doctor agreed to remain silent and left. Nivia told Charlotte to stay late. They talked about the situation that happened. The girl knew that she needed a maid. She will carry out all significant assignments. Nivia told Charlotte what would happen if she went and told everything to the Duke. The girl was at a loss. She didn't know what to do. Nivia offered to work for her so she could have what Philippa enjoyed. Charlotte affirmatively said that she did not really like Agnes's family. Everyone around, and especially Nivia, knew that she would never become a family member for them. She was just a temporary replacement. After they cured her sister, they would get rid of the girl. Nivia asked Charlotte if she was ready to cooperate. The girl hesitated a little, but still agreed. Nivia said that she needed to go to the cook and say that she suspected Philippa of stealing. They talked a little more about the plan, and Charlotte left. Nivia decided to rest for a while. When the girl fell asleep, she had a terrible dream. A large red eye looked down at her and devoured her. Suddenly, the crescent moon protected her, leaving a mark on her wrist. The girl woke up in fright. Nivia saw a crescent moon mark on her wrist. The young lady was at a loss why he appeared right now. She didn't know what kind of sign it was. She had never seen anything like this before. Charlotte came and brought Nivia something to eat. The girl saw that she had not touched the food and asked if she was okay. Nivia asked the girl if she did what she told her to do. The girl said that she did everything. Nivia wanted to know if anyone else besides her could see the mark on her wrist. But no matter what hint she dropped, Charlotte saw nothing. She only said that the girl needed new clothes, since she had already outgrown the dress Nivia ate and decided to go to class. The walking girl thought that if she wanted to leave her family, she needed to cure her sister of her illness. In this matter, she will be helped by her teacher Edward Spencer, a former professor at the Academy in the Holy Empire. Only children of the elite who actually had abilities studied at the Academy. Having a brilliant past need forced the professor to become a tutor in Agnes's family. The professor was unhappy with this name, but he had no choice. The main reason he was assigned was because he knew how to use a mind control spell. Using magic, he inspired Nivia to love and be devoted to Agnes's family. The professor knew that this was cruel to the child, but he had to do this because he wanted to cure his brother from reflux disease. He actively used family resources. This disease affects children who are born to magician parents. They do not live to adulthood. At one point, the power leaves the body and the child dies. Nivia entered the office and politely greeted the professor. He was at a loss how she was able to master the knowledge of etiquette. In one day, he thought she was just pretending. The teacher decided to discard all thoughts and began teaching the lesson. I started with history. I asked a few questions, Nivia answered everything and even revealed more. The teacher was shocked that she told everything. He didn't understand how she knew some information if he didn't teach her. Nivia, with a straight face, told the teacher that he didn't need to teach her anymore. 
Edward Spencer was furious at her statement. He looked at all her notes. They were just perfect. He knew that without help, this could not be achieved. Edward Spencer asked the girl if she had any other teachers, but Nivea said with a grin that no more teachers could reveal her origin. The man did not understand why she was telling him this and tormented himself with doubts that the mind control magic had not worked. Nivea told the teacher that she knew how to cure people with magical reflux. He was furious and at a loss as to how she knew he needed such information. The girl said that only she knew such information and no one else. The teacher tried mind magic on her. Over the past year, with the help of magic, she was instilled with love for her family and the desire to always protect them, but nothing worked for him. The girl said that she destroyed his magic. He was amazed by what he heard. This simply could not happen. Nivea looked at the stunned teacher and said that she wanted to make a contract with him, which would be beneficial to everyone. The young lady told the teacher three basic conditions and he agreed to enter into a contract with her. He had no choice. He wanted to help his loved one, and with the help of the girl, he would succeed. After concluding the contract, Nivea explained what the teacher should do in order to heal the patient. After hearing the solution to the problem, he said that this method might work. He was amazed and couldn't understand why he hadn't thought of this before. The girl recalled how in her sixth life it was precisely the teacher's recommendations sold her to the king. She furiously asked not to do this, but no one heard her plea. Nivea thought that maybe in this life he would change and become kinder to her. The girl left the teacher. As she walked, she remembered how she had to sacrifice her seventh life in order to break the spell. Now she can freely control her will. Wood interrupted her thoughts. He wanted to take revenge on her for her tricks. He shouted at her in rage. Nivea asked that he wanted to kill her. The boy was confused by her words. Nivea walked up to him, took his hand, and put it to her throat. She said that their father would be happy if he killed her. The boy pulled away from her, thus pushing Nivea towards the water trap. Floundering in the column of water, the girl remembered that she already had such feelings in her last death. When her carriage overturned and she fell into the water, she realized that her death was not an accident. She had been killed. Nivea couldn't afford to be killed again. To her surprise, the crescent moon on her wrist was absorbed by Wood's magic. She fell. He was amazed, because he did not expect this. He hoped to punish her, so that she would know who to fear. The girl used Wood's stolen magic against him. Nivea knew that since she was not a mage, she could not maintain magic for long. She knew that he would not stay trapped for long and would not die. Nivea decided to take advantage of the situation and called for help. Duke Agnes stood at the window reading a letter from the Empress. She was very interested in Nivea and wanted to see a portrait of her relatives. The Duke knew that this would happen and prepared in advance. His thoughts were interrupted by the arrival of his teacher. While talking with the Duke, the teacher asked if yesterday's incident could have caused her emotional shock. The Duke was surprised Edward Spencer said the mind control had weakened. In order to correct the situation, she needs to be less nervous. Their conversation was interrupted by the maid's scream. The men quickly ran to the first floor. The maid said Wood got caught in the water column, but got out in time. The Duke knew that something had happened between Nivea and Wood since she was also wet. The Duke approached Nivea and asked what happened. The girl knew that he was using mind control magic on her. Nivea knew that she needed to finish the performance so that the Duke would not suspect anything. She said she asked Wood to show her magic, and it was all her fault Nivea ran to her brother and asked in a gentle voice if everything was okay with him. Wood attacked her in a rage, knocked her to the floor, and began beating her. He shouted that the girl was a monster and he would kill her. The Duke stopped him, taking him away from her. Wood screamed that the girl had stolen his magic and used it against him. He was sure that his father would punish her for all the acts that she had committed against him. The Duke was surprised because wizard imitators are a priceless trophy. The Duke began to study magic around Nivea, but he only saw Wood's magic. Nivea said she saw blue when Wood started using magic, and then he got stuck in a pillar of water. The Duke said it was just a release of mana. He said that Wood should be more careful and send Nivea to rest. Wood was furious. 
He shouted that this did not happen and she was lying, but unfortunately no one listened to him or believed him. Nivea was walking down the steps when suddenly Charlotte came up to her and gave her a blanket because she was wet. When suddenly Nivea's sister called out to her, the little girl asked what Nivea was doing on the third floor. The maids laughed quietly at Nivea. Since Vivi's question sounded like a reproach, Nivea in turn apologized to her sister and said that because of the laughter of the maids, she did not hear the question. The girl asked her what Nivea was doing on the third floor. Nivi said that she now lives in one of the rooms. Vivi was very happy. Running up to her sister, she hugged her tightly. After the hug, Vivi asked her sister why she was wet. Charlotte would like to tell, but Nivia said that she got wet while playing with her brother. Vivi screamed that Nivi was a bad sister, since they were playing without her, and said that she also wanted to play with her brother. Nivi told her that her brother was busy right now, but she could play with him later. Vivi was very angry and said that she would go to her brother and ask him to play with her. She was very upset that she was not taken to play. Vivi ran at full speed to her brother. Nivi and Charlotte were surprised by this reaction. They could only watch her trail. Charlotte said that Vivi treated her rudely and added that Nivia needed to change her clothes. Nivia said that she would change clothes herself and go to the library and let her bring pumpkin porridge and tea to her father. Nivia went to the library. She wanted to know more about the crescent moon. The girl knew nothing about her origin and about the mysterious symbol. She hoped to learn at least something from the books that would help her figure it out. Wood screamed furiously and threatened to kill Nivia. The Duke only looked at him with contempt. Suddenly Vivi came and asked why they didn't call her when they were playing. The Duke said that they were not playing, but in a fit of anger, Wood shouted at his sister. The girl burst into tears after his words. The Duke was angry with his son for treating his own daughter this way. He punished him and said that if he did not stop, his punishment would be more severe. Wood apologized to his father. When leaving, the Duke told the servants that no one should know about what had happened. The Duke was sitting in his office when Charlotte suddenly came to him and brought him a snack from Nivea. The Duke tried it and really liked it. He thought that the girl was doing a very good job of playing the role of an ideal child. The Duke told his servant to order new outfits and accessories from a branded boutique. Nivea was sitting in the library when Charlotte suddenly came and brought her warm tea. Charlotte said that she brought a snack, and the gentleman, as a thank you, ordered her clothes from a branded boutique. Charlotte was very glad that the girl would have new things, and even from a fashion boutique. Nivea remembered how in her previous life, Vivi always boasted about her father's purchases and gifts. She wanted to show Nivi that he loved her more. She said that Nivi was just a replacement, a temporary doll. Wood was very angry. He shouted and washed the dishes. The nanny came running at the noise. She asked what was going on. The boy told her everything. She was very angry. In her thoughts, the woman made a plan on how to get rid of the girl. The nanny told the young master that she would do anything for him. Philippa said she had no intention of sitting idly by. The nanny was preparing a revenge plan to get back at the girl. The woman believed that the girl was disturbing everyone, especially her. She knew that if she told about her theft, she would simply be killed. Nivia sat in the library all night and found nothing. The girl was upset because she hoped to at least find out something, but unfortunately for her, everything was in vain. She no longer knew where to look or who to ask. The girl was confused. Charlotte came to her and they had a nice conversation. Charlotte said that she would bring her a lot of tasty things to eat. She said that the chef made apple juice and she simply had to try it. The girl was waiting because she had not tried the juice yet. She wondered what he was like. Charlotte went to the kitchen. She saw Vivi's maids. They mocked her and they took all the apple juice. Charlotte wanted to take it to Nivy. One of the maids poured something into the juice and insistently asked her to take the juice and bring it to Nivia. Charlotte did not like the behavior of the maids. They talked down to her. Charlotte did not want to break her promise to the girl, so she took the juice from the tray that was intended for Vivi. Taking what she needed, she quickly left without anyone noticing her. The maids were still sitting and drinking juice. They knew that if anyone saw them, they would feel bad. They were about to leave when suddenly one of the maids dropped a tray of food. The girl was holding her stomach and shaking furiously. 
Others grumbled at Charlotte because she changed the juice without them noticing and poisoned the maid. They were all determined to deal with her. Charlotte came to Nivea. The maid brought her food and apple juice. The girl tried it since she had never tried anything like it before. Nivea invited Charlotte to try it too and was very pleased Charlotte said she brought her some cold medicine. The girl poured the medicine into the juice after she found out what happened in the kitchen between the maids. Charlotte was surprised, but then she thought that the medicine was bitter and mixed with juice it would be just right. Suddenly, without knocking, a maid and a butler came into their room. The maid was furious and wanted Charlotte to be punished, but what she did, she started yelling at her nivy, and Charlotte were shocked. They didn't understand what was happening. The maid began to blame Charlotte for taking the juice that was intended for Vivi and also interfering with the medicine for an upset stomach, and the other maid felt bad. The butler did not want the Duke to know about this situation. He sent Charlotte to the laundry. Suddenly, their argument was interrupted by a girl's scream. Nivea fell to the floor, holding her stomach with her hands. She screamed that her stomach hurt. Everyone was at a loss. The maid was shocked because she knew that there was only one medicine and another maid drank it. Charlotte rushed to the girl. She didn't understand what was happening. But then she remembered that Nivea poured the medicine into the glass. Charlotte attacked the maid, screaming. She screamed that it was her and her friend's fault that her mistress felt so bad. The maids began to figure out what the problem was. They were having a loud discussion. In order to make sure that there was medicine in the juice, I decided to drink the juice. She was very surprised when she realized that there was medicine there. Maki screamed that this couldn't be happening. Charlotte said Maki came here with accusations without hard evidence. Maki hesitated and said that the juice was probably made from stale fruit. Charlotte asked the butler not to tell anyone about this. The butler said he wouldn't tell anyone, but he ordered Maki to bring a doctor for Nivea, adding that such an act was unforgivable, and if she did anything like that again, she would face severe punishment. Maki hurried after the doctor. Nivea told Charlotte to pour the juice into the flower pot. Charlotte said that she wanted to do this herself and hurriedly poured out the juice to cover your tracks. The butler met the gifts and said to take them to the third floor. The maid saw all the gifts and hurried to Vivi to tell her that they had brought her gifts. Vivi was looking forward to the gifts and asked the maid to see when they would bring them. The maid looked and realized that the gifts were being brought to Nivea. Vivi ran out to the maid and saw that the gifts were being carried in a different direction. She realized who they were carrying them to. She ran into her room. The upset girl quickly ran away. The store representatives left the gifts and left Charlotte, said there were about 30 gifts. They opened one. There was a dress there. Nivea said that these gifts were prepared for Vivi and were given to her. The girl said to fold everything. Because I didn't need them. Charlotte saw the pin and knew it was one thing that would suit a girl. She set it aside for Nivea to pick up later. Charlotte went to bring the girl something to eat. Nivea, I thought that she shouldn't bother herself with such petty problems. She knew that in a few days, she would leave her family. Nivea knew that she would soon meet Esselred. In all her lives, the girl had never seen him. There were only rumors about him. Because no one knew anything about him, everyone was afraid to come into contact with him. Because of his secrets, he did not leave the aisles of the house. Prince Creed came out as Esselred's successor. But before he took over, he faced many problems. Nivea saw him for the first time at the ball after an unpleasant incident. At the ball, wine was spilled on her dress. Confused, the girl ran away to where no one would see her. The girl saw Creed. He kindly offered her a cloak and left her company. The girl never used it for fear of unnecessary rumors. Nivea kept that cape and remembered his act with warmth and gratitude, because no one did this for her. Vivian lay in her bed while the doctor examined her. He told the Duke that she had suffered a serious emotional breakdown. The Duke was amazed that the gifts made the girl feel so sad and ill. He thought it was petty to be offended over something like this. Sometimes he wondered whether he raised his children correctly. The Duke called the maids and began to scold them because of what had happened, but they said that Nivea deliberately provoked Vivian, and this was not the first time the Duke could not believe it, since the girl was under the control of magic. She cannot harm their family. 
He knew that, for sure. Nivia came to her father holding a small box in her hands. She wanted to tell her father about the gifts, but the maid interrupted her. The maid reproached her and said that she provoked Vivi and brought the poor girl to a serious condition. And then, like thunder from the sky, the nanny flew into the room. She began to interrogate the girl and reproach her. She blamed her for all the situations that had happened lately, but Nivia said she didn't do anything. She was very scared because of the nanny's words. The nanny grabbed Nivia's hand and she dropped the gift. The girl timidly picked up the gift and said that she only needed this hairpin. Nivia looked at her father and said with tears in her eyes that she was grateful for the gifts, but she could not accept them and she will never ask for anything again. Looking at the girl, the Duke said that she was Princess Agnes and could want and get what she wanted, and she doesn't need to return the gifts. Nivia was surprised by his words. She was at a loss as to what influenced his decision. Philippa was furious at what was happening. In anger, she said a lot of things to the Duke about Nivia, but when the Duke asked her questions regarding the girls, she hesitated and apologized. But the Duke was furious. He took out his sword and began to communicate with them differently. The women were frightened and begged to be forgiven. On their knees, they frantically shouted words of apology. They knew that for such offenses, the Duke could kill them without hesitation. Vivian woke up seeing what was happening. She, with tears in her eyes, asked her father not to kill the maid and nanny. After all, they were the closest people to her who raised her from birth. The girl was ready to do anything if only her father would let them go. The Duke listened to her. He told Nivia that all the gifts were hers, and she should not give them away. The girl thanked her father and left the room. The Duke told Vivian not to be upset about the gifts he would buy her twice as many gifts. Nivia was walking into the room when she suddenly fell to her knees. She's tired of everything. It was mentally difficult for her. Nivy didn't know how to cope with everything. She just wanted a family and care from them. But the girls told themselves not to wonder. She quietly stuck a pin in her hair, stood up, and went to her chambers. Entering the room, she saw Charlotte lying unconscious on the floor. Nivy wanted to rush to the maid and call for help, but she was caught off guard by her brother who stood there with a smug smile. Wood stood over her with a satisfied look. The boy was proud of his action. With his malice, he ordered Nivia to be beaten. The girl was hit and fell to the floor. He tremblingly anticipated the hour of reprisal against her. Wood ordered the maid to be locked in one of the abandoned warehouses and the girl to be brought into the room so that he could communicate with her. The young gentlemen were very nervous. They were afraid that someone might see Wood assured them that everything would be fine and no one would see. Nivia was brought to one of the abandoned warehouses Wood already wanted to beat her quickly and so that no one would see her bruises. When one of his servants said that a knight had been assigned to the boy and he needed to hurry, Wood decided to deal with the knight first and then with the girl. He told her to lock her and left. Philippa walked nervously around the room not knowing what to do. The woman decided to frame Charlotte. She took the notebook and wrote Charlotte's name in it and, in addition, left the maid money and jewelry. With the evidence, she decided to go straight to the Duke, but he left and his duties were temporarily performed by the butler. Philippa told everything to the butler, and he ordered the cook and Charlotte to be brought. The cook was brought in, and the butler began to interrogate him. After searching the cook and Charlotte, they found jewelry. The butler asked where Charlotte was. They looked for her and could not find her just like Nivia. Philippa said she could have hidden or run away. The butler pondered the situation. Then they shouted and said that they had found Charlotte, but she was unconscious. The man said that he found Charlotte locked in one of the storage rooms. Philippa said nervously that the cook had decided to punish Charlotte but the butler wanted to figure it out because it seemed to him that this story was very murky. The butler told everything to the Duke. He was furious with everything that was happening in his house. He didn't want any fuss near his family now because he wanted to talk to the Empress about the girl he desperately wanted the girl to be found. Waking up, Nivia did not understand where she was or what was happening. The girl sat down, calmed down, and remembered what Wood had done to her. She knew that she urgently needed to get away from this place, since she would not be able to cope with the boy. She had been barely there for a long time, and her strength was running out. Nivia decided not to sit still. She started looking for a way out. 
The girl found the door, but it was forbidden. No matter how hard she tried, she could not open it. The girl didn't know what to do, but she knew one thing. She couldn't give up and stay in such a place. Nivea was in despair when she saw water on the floor. The girl pushed the box aside and saw a dog hole. The hole was small, but she had no choice. She had to climb. Nivea was able to squeeze through and managed to get out. Wood walked to Nivea and thought that everyone had turned the house upside down in search of the girl. He wanted to end her life immediately. How did he see Nivea? She managed to escape from the warehouse. He ordered the servant to catch her because he did not want to lose this chance to get even with her. The servant caught the girl, but she hit him with a pin and escaped. Wood was angry that the servant had let her go. His plans did not include the girl's escape. He used magic and caught her. Wood caught Nivea and pulled her towards him. He desperately wanted to get even. Wood wanted to use magic to cause her the pain and suffering that she had caused him. Wood screamed at her that she was nobody and nothing, and even without a crumb of magic he could hurt her. Nivea knew that she could absorb all the boy's power with a touch. She used his own power against him. How I saved my life. There was a loud explosion. The Duke saw it through the window. He quickly ran towards them. The Duke realized that Wood kept Nivea locked up and then used his magic on her, and he would have a mana surge. The boy was in serious condition. Nivea was lying nearby. There were no abrasions on her. The Duke reflected on the situation. He knew that this could not be hidden, and he needed to find the culprit. He saw the girl's pin covered in blood and realized that someone else was with them. Wood's servant was brought to the Duke. He begged for forgiveness and said that he was only following orders. The Duke said that it was all his fault, and Wood went to save his sister. The Duke ordered the servant to be thrown into prison. The Duke wanted to quickly deal with all the troubles personally, so that rumors do not reach the Empress. These rumors could ruin and tarnish the honor and reputation of his family. He could not allow this, since he had plans for the Emperor's family in the future. The servants whispered about what had happened to Charlotte. They were excited about what was happening and questioned Charlotte, unable to bear it. The girl said that it was Philippa who stole the money, and if they want proof, then let them go to the cook, and he will provide it. The Duke and the butler were discussing the current situation with the theft of money. When suddenly we heard a noise. They saw servants who came to inform them about the theft of money directly by Philippa. The Duke ordered Philippa to be searched, and the cook interrogated. The Duke asked the doctor how Wood was feeling. The doctor said he would be fine, but about magic, it's worth showing it to a specialist. Wood came to his senses. The father asked him how he felt and why he did this. Wood began to remember what happened and said that it was all because of Nivea. The Duke told his son to calm down and rest. The butler informed the Duke that Sir Spencer wanted to meet with him on a matter that cannot be delayed. The Duke said that he would meet him later, but he was serious, and he wanted a meeting immediately. Sir Spencer came to the Duke and told him extremely wonderful news. He could cure Vivian. The Duke was seriously excited by this news. He couldn't believe what he heard. He desperately wanted his daughter to be healthy. Sir Spencer and the Duke went to Vivian. Sir managed to help the girl and cured her. The Duke knew that now his daughter could become Empress. The Duke told Sir Spencer that for his salvation he might receive a great title and he would be glad to assist him in obtaining it. Edward Spencer said that he wanted to see Nivea before leaving. He also asked the Duke what he would do with the girl. The Duke was in no hurry to answer and Sir proposed to make her heir to the Duchy of Esselreda. Sir said that such a move would be beneficial to the family in the future. The Duke thought about the proposal. It also seemed beneficial to him. After Wood and Nivea's marriage, he would have acquired good connections and was very rich. Nivea woke up and saw that she was in her room. The girl was afraid that because of Wood, she had missed her escape. She called the maid. Nivea thought that Charlotte would come, but to her regret, a new maid came. The maid told the girl what happened with the nanny and her maid, and also said that Wood did not remember anything. The girl was resting when suddenly she was informed that Sir Spencer had come to see her. Sir Spencer informed Nivea that he had cured her sister and was going to go with the Duke to the Empress. As he left, he told her to take care of herself. Nivea was surprised by these words. Thinking about escape, 
she decided to take a short walk, and I saw my pin. The girl thought she had lost her. While walking around the house, Nivea saw Vivian. She ran to Nivea and said that she was completely cured, she was very happy and excited, and she said that from now on, everything will be different. Vivi said that since she was cured, Nivea no longer needs to play the role of princess. Nivea agreed, saying that he was very worried about the nanny. She could be killed and no one would come to her defense. Vivi was angry and said that she would definitely free her and no one would interfere with this. She ran as fast as she could to order the nanny to be released. Nivea went to the laundry room and found Charlotte. She told the girl that she could help her leave her family and start her own business. Charlotte was happy and grateful to Nivea. The girl said that it was too early to rejoice, and she was helping her since Charlotte had to do the work for her. Charlotte said she would do anything. Wood was informed that Charlotte wanted to come to talk to him. He knew that this maid was Nivea. Wood didn't understand what she needed. Wood wondered why Nivea sent her to him, but he still said that she should come in. The girl came in and said that Nivea would remain silent about what had happened, and that since his sister had been cured, Nivea would be placed in the care of another family. Nivea will be able to become an equal to the young master, and the duke said that he would consummate their marriage, but if the master wants this can be avoided. Wood was angry and shocked by what he heard. He couldn't believe his father could do this to him. He wanted to know how to avoid marriage with Nivea. When suddenly, the nanny flew into their room. They were surprised by her appearance, but she simply entered unceremoniously. She screamed at Charlotte in a fit of anger she attacked her and began to be wood ordered the nanny to be taken to prison where she belonged. The woman was shocked by what she heard. Wood said that no one should listen to Vivi and under no circumstances let the nanny go. Wood ordered Charlotte to continue to tell him what he needed to do. He wanted to carry out their plan and get rid of Nivy, but he also wanted to make some amendments. He had already mentally thought out everything he would do to her. Nivia wanted to sell all her gifts and ask the butler to do it. She said that she wanted to give the family a gift on the occasion of Vivi's recovery. The butler said he would do everything. Charlotte returned to Nivia and said that she had done everything Nivia gave her the money and told her that she needed to go terminate the contract and pay a fine, and then leave and open your own business. She also said where the best place for business is, Nivia told Charlotte to never come back and live her quiet life. Nivia walked down the stairs. When suddenly I found Vivi and the nanny. The butler told the nanny to go back to the dungeon, but Vivi shouted that she was in charge, and as she said so, it will be. The servant said that Wood was in charge in the house and they would listen to him. The nanny said that Vivi would soon become an empress and they should listen to the girl. Nivia said that no one has officially announced her engagement yet, and it is not good to gossip as it is punishable by punishment. The servants all fell silent, afraid to utter a word. The butler asked where Nivia was going. The girl said that she wanted to go for gifts. He said that he would immediately prepare a crew for her. Suddenly a maid came and said that the carriage was already waiting. Nivia sighed with relief and hurriedly walked towards the exit. Nivia went out and saw who was waiting for her. She got into the carriage that the gentleman had so kindly provided and they drove off. Nivia rode in the carriage and remembered her plan and what Charlotte told Wood. He knew partly half the plan. They stopped. Nivia knew that the mercenaries had already arrived. While they were talking, the girl decided to take the opportunity and run away. She was running when suddenly she was attacked. Nivia was already very close, but she fell. The girl told herself that she couldn't give up so easily. She tried her best to escape. The mercenaries were furious that Wood did not tell them that the girl was a sorceress. Wood shouted that if they let him go and killed her, he would pay them a lot of money. He didn't want to lose her because he was close to killing her. The mercenary took Nivea and was about to deal with her when the girl used her power and a violent explosion sounded. They didn't know she had power and didn't expect it. The girl planned everything before going with them. She touched wood and took his power. Nivea flew to the ground and thought about death. She didn't want to die at all. Since she had already achieved a lot in her escape, she did not have the strength to get up. Unexpectedly for her, a young man picked him up and carried him away. She was grateful to the stranger. Nivia woke up. 
She was glad that she was alive. She realized that she was where she wanted to be. Nivia wanted to waste no time talking about her future life with Duke Esselred. She hoped for his kindness and understanding. The girl saw gifts for her on the table, as well as medicine. Nivia was happy and grateful for this reception. Nivia heard a noise. She came out and saw Count Teor van Alvina. Nivia knew that he was a very nasty and wasteful man who wanted to appropriate the property for himself and make his daughter his heir. Nivia walked up to him and greeted him politely. He was angry with the girl and did not want to see her in the house. He didn't like that she was such a master of etiquette. He shouted at her and grabbing her hand began dragging her into a dark room to lock her up. Duke Esselred came and intervened. The Duke intervened in their fight and defended the girl. His brother was shocked. He never expected this from the Duke. He didn't understand why he was protecting a commoner. The Count, in a rage, said that he would deal with her himself and left. Nivia thanked the Duke for intervening. She began to tell the story of her appearance. But the Duke interrupted her and said that she did not need to talk to him like that. She told the whole truth and said that he could take advantage of her. The Duke did not expect such a straightforward statement. He asked why he should adopt her. But the girl said that in the future, she would bring him good money and connections. But unfortunately, he didn't care about money. The girl realized this in time and said that she could take care of the Count. The Duke looked closely at the girl he was interested in, how she wanted to get rid of the Count. Nivia said it's a secret and she can't unroll it. The Duke said she was too impudent. He said he didn't need her services. In addition, he told her to leave. He touched her hair. Nivia decided to take the opportunity to stock up on magic, but it didn't work out. The Duke understood what the girl wanted to do, but the young lady went ahead. She said that if he didn't like her hair, she could dye it or cut it off. The Duke said that she would cause a lot of problems so that he would spare her life, but she must go. Nivia decided not to give up. She made a few more arguments. After thinking, the Duke decided to stop her, told her to do what she wants, but he gave it a period of one year. After the line expires, she must leave the house. He disappeared, leaving the girl alone. She was in a big house and was thinking about a difficult situation. Her thoughts were interrupted by the arrival of the doctor. The doctor wanted to examine Nivia because she had many wounds on her body. The young lady met Minerva. While Minerva was dressing her, Nivia asked her if she had healed her. The girl said it was her Nivia thanked her sincerely for this. The girl was embarrassed. After all the procedures, she left the girl. The Duke called the servant and told him to return the Count to the house. He also said that the girl would live in the house and need to be looked after since she has a troubled past. He didn't understand why he had now met such a difficult girl. He had met people like her before, but it was fleeting. Walking through the house, the Duke saw not just a mansion, but a coffin in which he lives and cannot die. He wanted happiness, which was so inaccessible to him. Any impulses of tenderness or happy moments caused attacks. He knew he didn't have much time left. The Empress sat and thought about Agnes's family. She desperately wanted to see Nivea. She knew that the Duke's adopted child was not so simple. She also knew about their difficult relationship. The children in the family disliked the adopted girl, and everyone knew about it. She was informed that the Duke had arrived at the Imperial Palace, and she frantically wanted to chat with him and find out more about all his children. She needed information in order to use it for her own purposes. Duke Agnes and Edward Spencer arrived to the Emperor. They discussed all the issues, when suddenly their conversation was interrupted by the arrival of the Empress. The Emperor told his wife that Edward Spencer had found a cure for an incurable disease. He was given a new title for his achievements. They discussed a new title. The Duke decided to also discuss the engagement of his daughter and the Prince. He also wanted to send his adopted daughter to Esselred's estates. The Empress understood what the Duke wanted to achieve, and she suggested moving around and talking about everything over food. The Duke and Edward Spencer were riding in a carriage and discussing the past when suddenly the carriage was stopped. They did not understand what was happening and why they were disturbed. The Count from the Esselreda estate informed the Duke that his son was in the carriage, and he trespassed and entered the estate. The Count showed the corpses of the mercenaries as well as the contract written by Wood. 
The Duke was shocked. He never expected this from his son. The Duke realized that his son had crossed boundaries. He realized that he and his family would collapse. Such an act denigrated his family. The Duke began to blame his adopted daughter for the whole situation. He said that the girl had done this before, that she was just an uncontrollable child. The Duke apologized for the entire situation and said that he would pay compensation for the harm caused and he abandoned Nivea. The Count said that he could take his son and they will take care of the corpses. The Count walked to the Duke and thought about the girl. He was glad that the girl brought them money. They really needed it. But he was wary of the girl. He didn't understand why they treated her so harshly. The Count said that he did everything as the master ordered. The Duke said that he would keep the girl for a year. He also added that he was well aware of Agnes's plans for his adopted daughter and his own son. Nivea was sleeping. The girl heard a pleasant smell and woke up. A beautiful woman came to visit her. It was Margarita Romanov. The girl started to get angry, but the woman said that there was no need to behave according to etiquette. The girl was surprised and timidly introduced herself. Margarita brought hot soup. Nivea was very happy and did not understand why the women were so kind to her. Margarita promised that she would bring her chocolate chip cookies and milk. The girl sincerely thanked the woman. Nivea slept for half the day. When she woke up, she decided to take a walk and saw the cookies. Nivea decided to try it because she had never eaten anything like this. She really liked the cookies and didn't notice that she ate all the cookies. Her hands were all dirty. She wanted to go wash her hands. The girl went to look for a bathroom to clean herself up. Nivea walked through the deserted mansion. Various thoughts visited her. When suddenly her thoughts were interrupted by the Count, Nivea said she was looking for a towel to dry her hands. The Count said that he would take her to a room where she could clean herself up since they had no maids. They went to the bathroom. The girl washed her hands, and the Count thought that it must be very difficult for her to do everything with such scratches. Nivea said that she had dealt with her affairs and that she could go to the room. The Duke took a towel and wiped her face. Nivea admitted to him that she knows that he doesn't like her and knows that she worries him. The girl thanked him for his kindness, and she said that she does not claim to be the heir. She just wants protection. After talking, they went back, they reached the steps, and the Count took her in his arms because he knew that it was very difficult for her to walk when her whole body was covered in bruises, and he decided to help her. While the Count was carrying Nivea in his arms, they met the doctor. She was at a loss. The Count said that they needed to settle some matters. Margaret interrupted their conversation. She was carrying a whole tray of sandwiches, and she invited everyone to drink tea. They all went into the room to drink tea. Nivea was very happy she felt great. It seemed to her that this was her family. She asked if the Duke would come down to them. She was told that his schedule was slightly different. Nivea asked if she could come up to him to talk. She was told that if she walked, she might end up on a shield that would not let her through. Nivea asked if she could write a letter to the Duke. Everyone was very happy since the Duke had never received letters. They brought her everything she needed and showed her where she could write a letter. The girl wrote a letter. The adults really liked her neat handwriting. Nivea handed the letter to the Count. The Count said that she could simply address him as Schlemann. The girl was surprised whether it was possible to treat him so informally. Schlemann brought the letter to the Duke. He didn't want to open it and told him to burn it down completely, but the Count took it and put it on the table. The man didn't want to open it, but curiosity got the better of him. He read it and wrote a response. He called Schlemann and gave an answer. The Duke felt that his rebirth was approaching. Esselred's ancestors experimented with the creation of human weapons. Their experts were not bearing fruit, and they went to extreme measures. They decided to use force on the child who was in the womb. A man who was born with the power of the gods was the perfect weapon. The former Duke of Esselred married a woman with silver hair. They conceived a child with the help of the power of other gods. The experiment was a success. Lark is born Esselred, the strongest weapon. He later learned that mind control magic had been used on him. But after several rebirths, he managed to get rid of control. He wanted to save his mother, but she went crazy from the magic of other gods. 
After numerous reincarnations, he realized that his mother could not be saved each time his mother committed suicide. In addition, they killed everyone in the mix. They burned all the documents the Duke wanted to benefit this world. At first, everything was great, but later a traitor appeared. His assistant betrayed him. After all the events, Lark began to go crazy. He wanted to die, but he did not succeed. He was only reborn again and again. Lark knew that he would soon be reborn, since his body could not withstand magic. And by the age of 31, he dies and is reborn into a boy of eight years old. Nivea received a letter from the Duke. He called her to work for him. An envoy came to the Duke. He brought a letter from Duke Agnes. Nivea saw that a letter had been brought and said that she wanted to talk to the Duke about it, since she has something to tell him about this. Nivea told all her new friends that she would never hurt them, and she wants to make a deal with the Duke. The girl knew how events would develop. She suggested several options for ending the problem, but everyone turned out to be like she was sacrificing herself. After listening to her, the Count said that this would not work. Nivea was shocked. She didn't know what to do, but the Count said she just needed to ask for help. This was unbearably difficult for Nivea because of her past lives. The girl gathered her strength and asked them to help her. The woman hugged the girl tightly and lovingly and said that they would help her. Nivea was very surprised when she saw that the gentlemen were cooking themselves in the kitchen. The girl wanted to help them. She was given a task. They ate in the kitchen. Nivea asked if the Duke would eat with them. Everyone hesitated, and the Count said that the Duke could not eat with them for his own reasons. Nivea said that he was free to choose. Minerva remembered that she wanted to give something to the girl. Nivea saw an amazingly beautiful dress. She was delighted with what she saw. The girl thought her clothes were from a boutique. She thanked Minerva. The Count said that he had to go shopping and asked the girl what she would like. But the young lady said that she did not want anything and thanked him. But he decided to buy her something sweet. Nivea tried on dresses. She really liked it. The girl sincerely thanked Minerva. She also got a beautiful hairstyle. Nivea asked Margaret to give the Duke a letter. The woman brought food to the Duke and left a letter on the table. Nivea wrote that the gentleman still could not decide on the choice of work for her. The girl asked him to choose a job for her. The girl received an answer. The Duke appointed her as a hairdresser. Nivea was surprised. Minerva was just about to go to him and take the medicine, so the young lady decided to take the opportunity to deliver the letter. The Duke read the letter, in it. Nivea asked him for a job that she could do frequently. The Duke conveyed the answer. He was a little harsh in the letter, saying that she should thank him for giving her something Nivea thought and remembered her past life. The girl thought about his words and realized that he was right. She decided to write a response and asked Mierva to pass it on. Minerva quickly ran into the office, left a letter, and ran away. In it, the girl apologized and thanked him for pointing out her mistakes. After reading Margaret's letter, she decided that she needed to punish the Duke a little. Margaret and Minerva picked out clothes that suited the hairdresser. The Count came in to see them. He had already bought everything he needed and was free. When he learned what was happening, he said he would be first in line for change. Nivea gave him a very beautiful hairstyle. Everyone really liked the Count's new style. He paid her money for her work, after which they all went to the kitchen together. Nivea tried coffee for the first time. She didn't really like it because it tasted bitter. To reduce the bitterness in your mouth, she ate the lemon cake. She really liked it. She asked if the Duke had any food preferences, but I just heard that he hasn't been eating well lately. Nivea asked if she could take over the kitchen for a while. The girl wanted to prepare some snacks for the Duke. Nivea baked a cake and asked the Count to take it to the Duke. The Count took it to the gentleman, but he did not want to accept it and told him to take it back. The Count said that the girl gave him a beautiful haircut. He left the pie on the table and left. The man was surprised when he tried the pie. He hasn't eaten this for a long time. The girl had many talents. The Duke decided to go down and take the pie to the kitchen. When he reached the kitchen, he heard laughter and fun. They were all having a nice conversation. He didn't want to disturb them. He listened to them. In a fit of anger, he accidentally threw the plate. The Duke always dreamed of happiness, but because of his peculiarity, he forgot about it. Duke Agnes came to the man to order the murder of a little girl. 
The man said that there are magicians in the house who went through the war, and this could complicate matters. The duke assured that he would pay in full for the task to be completed. The gentleman wished Nivia good dreams, and she went to rest. She thought about their little family. She really enjoyed living with them. The girl fell asleep. Suddenly, a killer entered her room, but the girl was sleeping peacefully. The duke was in her room and was able to stop the intruder and deal with him quietly. He sat on the edge of the bed and thought about the girl. Various thoughts visited him, and he pushed them all away. The duke remembered how he had met the young lady before rebirth. Remembering past events, the duke did not notice how morning came. Nivia woke up and did not understand what the duke wanted in her room. He only said that the girl should start her duties and not sleep late. They went down together to the office where Nivia was getting her hair cut. The duke said he wanted to change his hairstyle and cut his hair. Nivia was a little hesitant because he had been growing his hair for nine years. The man took the scissors and cut off a long strand. The girl realized that he was not joking and got to work. The empress went down into the dungeon. She wanted to know how work was progressing on her ideal weapon. The empress looked at the boy and thought that she was very lucky to learn about the gift of foresight that Empress Estelle was hiding. The woman remembered how eight years ago she drank poison in order to frame Duke Eltz, as a result of which she lost her child. The woman kidnapped the child and kept him locked up in order to awaken the magic of foresight in order to later use him for her own purposes. The maid thought that she was being very cruel because this was her husband's child. The duke paid for the haircut with a gold coin. Nivia was very happy, but said that silver would be enough. He peered at her intently, and he thought that he could raise her as a daughter. The man wanted to know the joy of fatherhood. Suddenly he felt bad, Nivia asked if everything was okay with him and would like to approach, but the duke told her not to approach and went to his chambers. He was angry Margaret came to him, and in a fit of anger he said that she should not give the girl any work. Margaret came to Nivia and told her that the duke had told her not to entrust anything to her. The girl realized that she had to sit quietly and not stick her head out. Alvin came to the estate early in the morning. He brought two maids and said that he himself had a daughter and knew how difficult it was without maids. The count said that they did not need them. Alvin was very persistent. They quarreled, in a fit of anger. Alvin said a lot of things. Niaya decided to resolve the conflict and accept his help. She was already thinking about how she could use the maids. Leaving the servants, Alvin walked away in a hurry. The girl told Schlemmen that she wanted to eat. He, in turn, realized that the girl was slowing down something and sent the maids to the kitchen. The girls were shocked as they were only told to pretend and not serve them. After they left, the girl asked the Count to buy her a coat and shoes. She gave him a gold coin. Schlemmen said that he had already bought everything and asked him to hide the money. Duke Agnes was furious that the mercenaries were never able to kill Nivia. He thought that someone had helped her, but he did not understand why or for what purpose, in order to find out all the details he needed to visit the Imperial Palace. Arriving at the Imperial Palace, everyone was a little puzzled by the situation. The gentlemen began to understand the situation. The Empress was interested in their proceedings and was amazed that the Count defended the girl so fiercely. The maids picked up food and carried it into the room. On the way, they discussed the house and the meager food at the top of their lungs. When they arrived in the room, they saw Nivia and Minerva. They had already eaten. Nivia said that they walked for a long time, so she herself found something to eat. But she told them to leave the food, and she would have a snack before dinner. They behaved a little rudely. Nivia didn't pay any attention to this. Minerva said that she would show them their chambers. She led them into the room and showed them where they would live. She also added that they should keep their mouths shut inside and outside the house. They said they understood everything Minerva was about to leave when she suddenly fell. They stood on her leg, which led to this situation. She fell and her glasses fell off. One of the maids crushed her glasses. Minerva was in despair. Minerva sat on the floor in despair. Suddenly, Nivia came. She picked her up and took her to Margaret. The girl asked Margaret to examine Minerva, saying that she had fallen. Minerva said that she was an illegitimate child and was already accustomed to humiliation and beatings. She also said that the Duke saved her and took her to his home. Margaret hugged the girls tightly. 
the Count came in and said that all the outfits would be delivered tomorrow. He told Nivea that she was right when she said that Teorvan would send the letter. The Duke said that compensation would soon arrive at the estate. He also gave her a letter from Duke Agnes. Nivea read it but did not learn anything new for herself. The Duke read and was perplexed. He wondered how people could be like that. The man asked Nivian if she had a plan to protect their home, and he said that he would listen to her in everything so that she would help them. The maid went to tell her master all the news that happened in the estate. The maids whispered and thought what they could do for Nivia. They wanted to put a mouse in her bed and still did as they planned. The maids brought her food, and they wanted to help Nivia take a bath. The girl said she could handle it herself, but the maids insisted on their own. Minerva came and saved Nivia. The girl said it was time for an examination. Margaret arrived. She met the maids and told them that their master had come and he wanted to talk to them. Nivia and her friends saw a mouse in the bed. The girl realized that the maids had tricked her. She decided to punish them. The maids met with their master, and he told them that guests should soon arrive at the estate and they should greet them in style. And if everything goes smoothly, they will take possession of the estate. The maids returned to the girl and saw her in bed. They didn't know if she saw their surprise. The girl said she wanted to get some sleep so they could be free. The maids left. As they walked along the corridor, they noticed shadows. Nivia used magic on them, which they used on her. They were so scared that one of the maids ran from the estate as fast as she could. Watching them, the girl realized that someone could have entered her room. She took a stationary knife and decided to hide. At night, killers made their way to Nivia. The Duke realized that someone was again making an attempt on the child's life. He came down, saw them, and killed them. Nivia attacked the Duke in the confusion. She later apologized and thanked him. The Duke said that the girl was nothing but trouble and asked her not to come into his sight. Wood was very angry that Nivia could not be killed. She ruined his life and ruined his face, so he desperately wanted her dead. Nivia was brought new outfits. She looked great when she tried them on. A maid came in and was asked why she was alone, but she said that her friend was sick, and she decided that she should not appear at the estate. Count Alvin has arrived. He was furious because the girl was still alive. Alvin started a fight. He was told that he should not behave this way before the arrival of guests. In a fit of anger, he said many unpleasant things and left. When everyone gathered in the room, Nivian told them about her idea and further work. Everyone really liked what she said, but they knew it would take a lot of money. Nivia said that it is fashionable to make samples, and if someone likes it, then production can be launched. They met the Duke and the teacher. The teacher said that he wanted to test the girl's knowledge. Nivia walked up to Margaret and took her power, but she said that the teacher was good and everything would be fine. The teacher told Nivia that he would help her become a mistress and have power over others. After thinking about his words and his behavior, Nivia didn't like it. She decided to get rid of him. The girl finished her conversation and went downstairs. There she saw Wood. He was furious that she was alive. The boy pointed a magic pistol at her. He shouted at her furiously. He was stopped. He didn't have time to do anything before the girl used magic. The girl was caught. The maid held her tightly, but Nivia managed to break free and ran away. When Nivia ran, Wood saw her, he decided not to waste the moment and aimed his weapon and fired. As always, the Duke intervened. He saved her. All the gentlemen came running to the noise. They realized Wood was the shooter. Duke Agnes was shocked by his son's actions. He could only ask how he could make amends. The Duke said he must give up guardianship of the girl. Duke Agnes was shocked. He said it's not that simple. But they nevertheless concluded a magical agreement and left in a hurry. Count Alvin began shouting after him that Duke Esselred was to blame for everything. The man was furious and chased Alvin away from the house. Nivia woke up and saw that she was not in her chambers. The girl did not understand what was happening and why she was in another room. She asked to be told what happened. Her new friends explained everything to her, and they said that the Duke refused guardianship. Nivia was pleased but also unsettled by what happened. Nivia was visited by Charlotte. The girl wanted to work for them. Charlotte said she wanted to pay her for her goodness. Nivia was persuaded to accept it. Everyone ate and welcomed Charlotte into their ranks with great joy. 
Nivea said she wanted to go to the Duke in person. Margaret asked her if she found the escort boring, but the girl said she could handle it herself. She went to her chambers in order to get ready and go to the Duke. The girl changed her clothes and put her hair in order. Nivea entered the Duke's chambers and began a conversation with him. She thought to herself that his chambers looked very gloomy. Nivea was talking with the Duke. She wanted to talk about her business, but he beat her to it and said that he already knew about everything. He asked what else she wanted to ask. Nivea said that she wants to leave Charlotte, who came to her Duke Esselred. He said that she could do whatever she wanted, but he will check her business himself personally. Nivea was surprised. Nivea left the office. Margaret asked her how it went. The girl said that everything was fine, and she succeeded. Nivea said that he wanted to cook dinner and bring it to the Duke. They prepared delicious dishes. Nivea said that she would take the Duke some food. Margaret said that it would be difficult for her to bring everything in, and she offered to help. The girl agreed with her proposal, and they went together to the Duke. The ladies brought the Duke food. He was unhappy. But I decided to try what they brought. The man said that everything was too salty and the food was sour, but he ate everything. The ladies left him satisfied. The Duke told the Count that he needed to hire a bodyguard for Nivea, since there had been several assassination attempts. Nivea woke up very early and decided to prepare breakfast. She prepared food and decided to bring it to the Duke. I hesitated a little in front of the door. Deciding to leave without going in, Nivea saw the Duke. He said that she should come in. The girl wanted to sit on the chair, but it was too high. The Duke helped her by using magic. They sat down to eat at the table. The Duke and Nivea were eating and having a casual conversation. They were having fun. The Duke liked this atmosphere. He felt happy. Their cheerful conversation was interrupted by the Duke's attack of illness. He told Nivea to leave. The Duke did not want her to see him like this. Nivea decided to go to the city. She wanted to benefit the Duke, and for this, she needed information. Walking towards the store, she thought about all the problems and their solutions. Nivea thought about it. Unexpectedly for her, she was pushed. The girl saw a young man with the same blonde hair as hers. The young man apologized and invited her to a coffee shop to make amends. Nivea didn't want to, but she still went with him. She was heading there for information. He invited her into the office, saying that the place belonged to him. They brought treats. The girl ate everything. She didn't know him. He did not appear in her past lives. The store owner asked Nivea what she needed in such a place. The girl decided not to walk around for a long time and told him everything. She was tender for some information, and in return she offered information that greatly interested the young master. The gentleman invited her to enter into a magical contract with him. They signed it, and Nivea left. Going outside, she saw that it was raining heavily. Nivea wanted to go back to the store and ask for an umbrella. But before she could do anything, her new acquaintance came out with an umbrella and offered to take her to the house. The Duke sat and thought about Nivea. He wanted to see her. Having asked Margaret where the girl was, he was furious. The Duke was afraid that she would leave him. He was frantically afraid that she had left forever because of him. The Duke stood at the gate and waited for her. He desperately wanted to see her. He could not leave the mansion. Magic did not allow him. Nivea is back. A new friend gave her a ride. She politely thanked him for his help and left. The girl saw the Duke. He was pale and all wet. The Duke apologized to her for his behavior. Nivea said that everything was fine and he had nothing to apologize for. Unexpectedly for her, he fell and lost consciousness. The girl didn't know what to do. She called for help. The young master called his servant Ricardo. He gave him an assignment. God wanted to know everything about the girl and whether what she said was true. Upon returning to his estate, the master learned that Duke Agnes was no longer Nivea's guardian. He was surprised by this turn of events. The count visited the carver Ricardo and gave him a task from Nivea. The carver was very surprised that his mistress was Nivea. Nivea was very worried about the duke. She blamed herself for the fact that he was in such a terrible state. Margaret consoled her and reassured her. Charlotte brought breakfast to Nivea. The girl was worried about the duke and did not want to eat. Nivea quickly got ready and went to the duke. She replaced the ladies who had been watching him all night. She went to the duke's room. 
The girl saw him and what condition he was in. Nivea looked after him a little and left. Alvin arrived with his daughter. From the moment they arrived, they were already out of sorts. Alvin said to call Margaret immediately. Nivea said that the woman was resting, but he shouted that he wanted to see her urgently. Moreover, he insulted Nivea and started a quarrel with Count Jenner. Nivy needed medicine for the Duke and decided to play a little with Alvin. Do everything as he wants. Alvin sent Nivia to live in the servants' quarters. Nivia obediently went with him. He said that, for someone like her, these chambers are just right. But his daughter deserves more. After listening to him, Nivia asked if she could go and pick up her things from her old room. Walking along the corridor, the girl saw Charlotte. She said that she had brought anesthesia. The girl didn't want anyone to see Charlotte. Nivia made her her shadow, and they went to get their things. Nivia, with contempt, and threw all her things into the corridor and trampled on her. Nivia was furious because those things meant a lot to her. Charlotte said Nivia shouldn't leave it like that. Charlotte brought Nivia a blanket to cover herself and not get sick. They entered the room and saw that all of Nivia's things had been cut up. Charlotte asked Nivia for forgiveness. But Nivia said that she had nothing to apologize for. There was nothing she could do. Nivia decided to take some revenge on the girl and her maids for what they had done. Masha walked with the maids and discussed the house and what they had done. Suddenly they saw a mess in the wardrobe and a cut dress. Masha was very angry. She knew who did it. She screamed for Nivia to be found and brought to her. The maids said that she was nowhere and that she might be on the third floor. Masha went to look for Nivia. She made a fuss about the search. Nivia was coming down from the third floor. The girl started screaming why Nivia could go in there, but she couldn't. Masha started screaming. But Nivia managed to calm her down, and she ran away. Nivia went to Masha. She wanted to talk to her. Masha sent her maids, and they were left alone. Nivia did not stand on ceremony with her. She wanted to clearly explain to her that she was crossing all boundaries. Nivia used magic on her. Alvin arrived at the estate. He was furious and said that he would punish Nivia. Nivia walked down the steps. Alvin saw her. In a rage, he asked why she could go to the third floor. But she said that the Duke gave her permission. Alvin was furious. And he hit her. Nivia didn't want to let him get away with it. She wanted to stab him. But the Duke beat her to it. He almost killed him in his rage. But Nivia stopped him since killing Alvin could disrupt her plans. Alvin began to talk about the legacy and that his daughter was best suited to be the heiress of the estate. The Duke said that he would raise the heir himself and that he will adopt Nivia. Alvin was shocked by what he heard. He would still like to sort things out because he wanted to see his daughter in the role of heiress. Alvin was called by a servant saying that he was having problems on his plantation. He left in a hurry. Nivia was surprised by what the Duke said, but I was very happy. He said that now she would have his last name and a real family. Margaret saw her face and became furious. Charlotte said that they came all the way first. They put her in the storeroom, then they cut her things and caused abrasions. Nivia apologized to Margaret for ruining her cloak. Margaret calmed the girl down. The Duke heard everything that was done to Nivia and became furious. He decided to grind Alvin into powder. He wondered how such a fragile girl could endure so much.